everyone, I've just got some baked potatoes cooking in the oven so I thought it would be a good time to have a little chat with you. So today's video is going to be all about art fairs because last Sunday I was at the ink, prints and paper fair, I think I said that in the right order, and um, it was my first fair um, other than sort of doing a couple of fairs at uni. Um, so yeah, my first proper fair, so I thought I would share my experience and uh, my top tips. Um, if I'm looking down, it's because I've, I've got some notes here. But yeah, what I thought would be really useful is to give you a checklist of different things that you need when doing a fair. And I think this is the checklist I'm going to keep for myself for next time. So first thing first, I would definitely recommend going to have a look at different art fairs if you're interested in selling your stuff at them just to see what kind of things people are selling um, how they're laying everything out and yeah just you know it's also just quite a fun experience to go to these things as well quite often um, they have talks as well um, one of the things that I really want to do is I'm planning on making a list of all the illustration fairs and art fairs that I'm interested in whether that be to go and see them or to actually sell my stuff at and then make a note of when the fair is and when I need to apply but yes yeah, so let's talk a little bit about um, the illustration fair the ink print and paper fair that I went to um, so I was in the Winter Gardens in Margate, which is a really beautiful concert hall. It was actually on in two different venues. It was on in the Turner and also in the Winter Gardens. But it was a lot bigger than I was expecting as well. There was so much space. Other fairs that I've been to before, um, sometimes they can be quite crowded, but this, it was really lovely. Um, and they had music playing and yeah, it was a really lovely atmosphere. To be honest, I didn't have a load of sales, but when I went round and had a chat to some other people, um, some people said they did better on the Saturday. Um, I don't know if that was anything to do with the weather because when we did arrive, it was very windy. Yeah, some people did mention that um, it was a bit treacherous outside. Things that you need. Uh, firstly, obviously you will need some products. I will link to the unboxing video that I did when I got my awesome merchandise box. For products, I've used awesome merchandise. I had some Christmas cards, which I had printed through, through a few different printers, but the one that I'm really happy with the quality is a company called Six Prints. I will link them below. For my actual prints that I had done as well, I had them done with another online printer, I think it was called Savage. So first you need your products, and then obviously you need to work out what sort of prices you want to do. All of these products are already on my Etsy shop. Price-wise, that was, oh, the time is gone again. Out of time. <laughs> I am back and I've had lunch it was very very nice um, carrying on with our list so um, one of the things you obviously need is some way of displaying your products so next to me I have oh this thing which kind of looks like a clothes horse at the moment um, but yeah, and this I, I got from Amazon. Um, but yeah, basically, you can just put whatever you like in there. Um, I put prints in here, um, but you could you could put cards in here, and it's quite handy because it folds flat. And then I also had wait a minute, I got this thing, which this is actually like. A book stand for I guess if you wanted to like have a cookery book or something in your kitchen and I just put some of the notebooks and things in there and then I just had some different boxes and things with my postcards and 
stuff in. You will also need something to carry everything in. You will need some business cards. I got mine from Moo and I really like Moo cards because you can get all different designs on them. Um, I got my postcards from Moo as well and they do their like... Um, so my phone just died. Yeah, so um, Moo do their thing where you can, I think they call it printfinity or something like that. Basically you can have like a whole load of different designs of um, business cards or postcards or whatever you want. But yeah, so phone died, so having a tea break. And it's also really dark because I don't know what the time is now. I'm gonna guess about four o'clock maybe. And yeah, November now, so it's getting a bit dark. Um, I should probably crack on before this video gets really, really long and will be horrible to edit. It's nice to have some kind of decoration for your table. So I got some bunting. Um, maybe I should have put this up in the background. I do apologize for the background for this video hasn't been very interesting. Um, hopefully you'll be all right, just my face. Imagine that this lovely bunting has been there the whole time. Um, but yeah, <gasps> make a nice fetching scarf. Uh, so other things that you'll need. Um, they recommended having some paper bags, which when I've been to other fairs, I've seen lots of people having these types of bags and they're sort of a little bit like sweetie bags. Um, these I got off Amazon as well. Um, so I got some that have got patterns on them and then I got some slightly bigger ones which were brown paper. Although I think a lot of people generally just bring their own bags as well just because they're trying to save the planet. But you know, these will keep for ages. Um, so I'm sorted for bags now. So the other thing that you will need is some um, some change, um, which I have put in my lovely BFG tin. I love this. So cute. Um, I actually found it um, harder than I expected to get change because I assumed that I could just go to the bank and the I could ask for however many pound coins that I would need. I think it's true with a lot of banks, they don't actually keep change on site unless it's change that people have brought in. But you can go to the post office and they do a service for that. Having a notebook as well um, is quite useful if you want to write down what people have bought as well. Other things you might want to look into are maybe those card reader things. This wasn't something that I had um, but something that I might look into. But yeah, other things that you might need are pegs, maybe, for if you want to display stuff. You might need twine. Other odds and ends, sellotape, notebooks are a good idea. Labels for prices. Um, but yeah, so we just got these, um, I keep saying we, um, because um, one of the things that you might need is a helper. So Tom, my husband, came along and Tom was very helpful and it's nice to have a little bit of a chat if there's a quiet moment. Tom suggested as well that I did some deals like if people bought more than one item. Oh, another good idea that Tom had was that we write the prices down in a notebook so that we could see them on our side because obviously when you're displaying everything, all the prices are on the other side of the table. And if you're not that familiar with how much all your different prices are, um, then when somebody says, oh, can I have this and this and this? It's good to know how much that is. <laughs> um, so I thought it might also be good to let you know some tips that I got from, from some other artists that I saw. I had a little walk around, um, had a chat with a few different people, and then also it was just fun to see how everybody had laid their table out because some people had used like um, kind of bamboo sticks or one woman had actually, she had tree branches like on the sides of the tables um, 
which looked really quite effective and then she had almost like a sort of um washing line where she had like the different prints that went across um i also saw that a lot of people had i think you call them browsers kind of like stands that they had on the ground where people could like flick through different prints i think people quite like having some uh, i suppose it's different to going into a shop because you're not sort of looking at the salesperson directly in the face. And this was something I wasn't sure because obviously I wanted to be like friendly when I saw people coming over to my stall, but I didn't want to make them feel, I don't know, sort of put off and like I was kind of pouncing on them. But yes, another tip that I did have from some of the artists is some of them have, um, we're talking about doing wholesale. So they've either, um contacted companies to do like wholesale deals or they've gone to like other fairs that specialize in wholesale um i think these other fairs are quite a bit more expensive um but yeah it's something that i might look into but yeah i did actually have a shop that bought one pack of my christmas cards um, and then they have contacted me afterwards asking about wholesale prices. I'm not sure what most people's margins are like with the wholesale prices because currently with the Christmas cards that I've ordered, because the paper is, uh, the card is like quite nice and thick, um, I can't really do them that cheap. Just other updates. Um, I finished my Inktober, so uh, yeah, really pleased with myself for doing that, especially as when I started this project, I was thinking, like, have I bitten off more than I can chew? Um, but yeah, so I will link to the other Inktober videos, and if you follow me on Instagram, um, you can go back and have a look at all of the Inktobers that I've done. Um, I really want to, like I mentioned before, do some either like postcards of them or maybe like a little sort of book slash scene type thing. Um, but yeah, so let me know in the comments if that is something that you would like to see and maybe I'll be showing that on uh, one of my next videos. I really hope you enjoy this video. I hope it's not too dark now. Subscribe and hit the notification button for more art related videos and just long rambly chats. And um, let me know if you have any questions about art fairs and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye.